Well, greetings, church family. Today's daily Bible reading had us in Joshua chapters 7 and 8. And in chapter 7, verse 1, we see that Achan of the tribe of Judah failed to honor that ban against keeping the riches of Jericho for oneself. All of it was to go to the Lord. God's wrath was stoked because of the man's disobedience and the consequence of Achan's sin. Verses 2 through 15 is Israel's first defeat in the promised land, 36 men dying by the soldiers of Ai. That city named Ai, able to defeat this mighty army of Israel. And the sole reason is that the Lord allowed that defeat due to the sin of Achan. Joshua rightly asks the Lord, well, why? Why are the soldiers defeated? And thankfully, it seems from verse 9 that he cares most about God's own name, the Lord's own glory. He even asks, and what will you do for your great name to the Lord? And God clearly places a responsibility for eyes defeat of Israel on the people's sin against the Lord, taking some of Jericho's goods instead of giving it all to God. Well, the rest of chapter 7, verses 16 through 26, uh, what's implied in this kind of step-by-step -step narrowing down of the people of Israel to determine who took those spoils of war from Jericho, the implication is that the Lord is the one leading Joshua to hone in on Achan as he starts going down to tribe and then to family and etc. down to Achan. And most likely it was through the casting of lots or some such uh, device that would allow it to be clear who the Lord was pointing to. And Achan admits to the guilt. And the Lord's response is to have all of Israel stone him and his family to death before burning their bodies and covering their corpses with stones and marking that area by the Hebrew word for trouble, which is akor. And indeed, it is trouble, both the trouble that, a that Achan brought to Israel and the trouble that was brought upon Achan because of his sin. In chapter 8, verses 1 through 29, the bulk of the chapter, we see that now that the sin is dealt with, God's going to give eye to Israel easily. And Joshua's battle strategy, which he received from the Lord in verse 2 of chapter 8, was brilliant, setting an ambush behind the city of Ai, drawing out their armed forces with the rest of Joshua's team of crack soldiers, right? Valiant warriors, verse 3 says, 30,000 of them. You know that these had to be the best of the best because remember how many soldiers came from just the two and a half tribes, 40,000 equipped for war back in Joshua 4, verse 13, that crossed with Israel. So this is the best of the best when you count the rest of the tribes and all of their soldiers, and Joshua is able to easily route I. It leaves I unguarded when they send their soldiers out to chase after Joshua. The ambush team comes in, forms a kind of pincer maneuver, able to signal with fire inside the city to the rest of Joshua's forces, and then they just squish the forces of I between them, and they squash their foes easily. All 12,000 people of I are destroyed by Israel, along with the city itself. And remember, this is a judgment just as the rest of the judgment on the people of the land, uh, uh, the wickedness of the people of that promised land before Israel would come. And then chapter 8, the rest of it, verse 30 through 35, we see Joshua leading Israel to obey God's command in Deuteronomy chapters 27 and 28, pronouncing the Lord's blessings on Mount Gerizim and the Lord's curses for the people's future disobedience on Mount Ebal. Well, a couple of principles in application from these two chapters. First, note that any disobedience of God is considered a disgraceful thing by him, and he meets it with his divine judgment. And that's why you and I must hate any sin and keep ourselves from it so that we would not disgrace our Lord. It's why Jesus had to die on the cross so that Christ would bear God's judgment, his wrath, instead of those who would repent from their sin and trust in him. And God's wrathful judgment does not change the fact that he is still right and good. All his decisions are done in righteousness. He never makes a mistake in whom he punishes, whether it was in the Old Testament or now or in the future in the eternal punishment that we know will take place in hell for those who do not turn from their sin and trust in Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection uh, happening in their place. A second principle, we need to beware the sin of Achan. What did he do? He saw, he desired, he coveted, he stole. And it's similar to Eve in Genesis 3, 6. The woman saw that the tree was good for food. It was a delight to the eyes. There's a desire that takes place. The tree becomes desirable to make one wise. So it's a desire both in her, in her flesh, but also in her uh, mental state as she's thinking through what is going to happen when she eats from this and she takes from its fruit and ate and gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. 
James 1, 14 through 15 says clearly each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust or desire. And then when desire or lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. And so if you are in Christ Jesus, if you have turned from your sin and trusted in him alone for salvation, then you and I need to heed the words of 1 John 2, 15 through 16, uh, among others. <laughs> and that's do not love the world nor the things in the world, because if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. Achan had a lust of the eyes. He saw, he coveted, and he stole for himself instead of trusting the Lord in his provision. And if you are in Christ, then you and I need to refrain from doing the same, that we would trust the Lord instead and not covet after the things of this world and, and that which our own desires, our own lusts bring to mind. We need to put those desires to death, the sinful desires, and instead ask God as we search his word, as we are in prayer with him daily, as we behold who he is and what he does, that God would grant us the desires of his heart, his desires to us and, and cause us to conform to Christ likeness each and every day. Uh, well, this has been Joshua chapters 7 and 8, and I hope you have a great day.